buongiorno, buon pomeriggio, and buonasera, Laziali, around the world. You are joined by myself, Sean McIntosh, and the infamous, the Canadian kid, Stephen K. Moore uh, from the Laziali. And we are excited to chat, obviously, Champions League football here, coming off the heels um, of what was not only a, a, a big win, a few days ago um, in Champions League against Borussia Dortmund, but you know us solving a few of our issues and, and picking up all three points in a very important Serie A match. I think certainly the mood coming into uh, this discussion is probably a little bit uh, more positive, Stephen, would you say, um, than the last recording? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, going to Borussia Dortmund down... Uh, 3 nothing to Sampdoria the match before, I definitely thought that we were going to get pummeled. I think me and you both said that we were going to end up losing that game 3-1. But we were saying on the optimistic side, we said we hoped they'd kind of turn things around and win. But obviously, by the looks of it going into this match, especially on the form we were in, it was going to be a, a slaughter. But at the end of the day, I nominated them was absolutely the exact opposite. So that was definitely good to see. And then, obviously, the other team, it's good to hear things going on from Sean. I'll let you take the lead on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, look, uh, last time, one, one thing was, uh, one thing we were right about was the score line. One thing we were dead wrong about was obviously uh, the score line and who ended up uh, finishing, you know, in, uh, in that victory position. So uh, we are excited to chat and discuss our upcoming opponents in greater detail, you know, with an expert on Club Bruges. We're excited to be joined by Glenn, who is a journalist with Football Premier. Uh, so, Glenn, thank you so much for joining Stephen and I on the Bianco Celesti broadcast today. Thank you for having me. So, for, first things first, um, again, as, as, as the person in tune with the Belgian League uh, and Club mm -hmm. Rouge, you know, give the Laziali around the world uh, who aren't as um, expert um, in what's going on in the Belgian league, a little bit of an update. How how is Club Bruges currently performing? Where do they stand in their table in the league? Well, it's kind of a mixed result. We're in uh, second place in the uh, in the league, so that's not that bad. But we should have been well, definitely first. That's also our ambition every single year. Um, because last year we ended up uh, winning the league with. 15 points ahead. Uh, now it's actually a, a real title race with uh, three or four clubs. So it's going to be difficult this year. Um, and we definitely hope for better because we also already lost three games this season. Last year, we only lost one. So it's not really uh, the best start of the season. Yeah, I think you're seeing that around the world, right? I yeah. Think, um, you know, in, in every major league uh, across Europe, you're seeing you know, really some odd things happening, um, you know, partly due to, to COVID, you know, and, and maybe yeah. it, it's certainly time for some of those clubs that have been dormant. I think certainly in Serie A, we're seeing, you know, the rise of Milan. Um, but I think that COVID and, and what's happened around the world is, is certainly a big part of it. And so, you know, no, no doubt we see around the leagues, I think there, there's going to be a lot more competition you know, for some of those title races. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a great point that you, that you brought up, but you know, what were your expectations? Not only, and, and I'll ask you about certainly league play, but obviously the, the focus of this conversation is going to be a Champions mm -hmm. League. What were your expectations for your club, Club Bruges, um, in both league play and Champions League? Well, we're quite ambitious in the Champions League, especially our board, but... I mean, when you see um, Lazio, Zenit, and Borussia Dortmund, you're not thinking of uh, ending in the in the top two. You're just thinking you're hoping for a couple of points, maybe a win or two. And we've done pretty well against Zenit. Um, and now <laughs> Lazio, that's gonna be a different. <laughs> that's gonna be a different game. Um, no, everything, every point we can take is great. Um, and if the, the first three points were actually, well, mm -hmm. miraculous, actually. So, yeah, we're happy with how we started um, our European process. 
Definitely, yeah. I think both Lazio and Club Bruges were both very surprised by the results, especially the fans in, in the first game. Yeah. The expected losses, which has impressive in the league this year, um, as the previous seasons where they've only lost one game, but now they've already lost three. Um, are there specific reasons for this? Are there any tactical changes, or is it due to the style of plays, or due to players leaving or kind of joining the team? What do you feel is the reason for that? There's a there's there's a couple of reasons. Um, we didn't start off with with the right focus. We've got the same group. There's only uh, one new player in the group, so it's always difficult for for a, a team that's already won a, a title to get the same focus and the same motivation to start and keep winning. That hasn't happened in the first couple of games. Uh, and also the other teams in the league, the one game in the in the season they want to win is against Club Rouge. So it's not it's not that easy as last year. Um, there's also a couple of injuries, like Simon Daly, who is really important for us in the back. He's been injured uh, two or three, three games already. Um, Mechela had COVID. So there's a couple of reasons. Definitely interesting. And then just touching back upon their style of play. So how does Club Bruges play? What do they line up in? What formation do they play? Um, tell us more about that. Um, last year we played in a 3-5-2 formation, but our head coach Clement, uh, he actually preferred in a f- playing in a 4-3-3 formation, which we, we've been doing in the league. Um, it's been pretty successful, especially with our group, uh, with our team, because we've got two uh, greats, like um, great wingers in Diata and Dennis and Noah Lang now. So um, 4-3-3 formation is one of our new formations, but it's still being, we still got to improve in, in that regard because it's not as, a, we're not as good in that formation yet as our 3-5-2 from last year, which was also, also proven against Zenit, where we played in a 3-5-2 as, as well. And, act, well, we've won with a 2-1. Uh, so... I'm not sure if it's going to be the same against uh, Lazio or it's going to be a 4-3-3, 3-5-2. I'm expecting a 3-5-2 formation with um, a solid defense because that hasn't been, that hasn't really been, we haven't really been defending that well this year in our 4-3-3. Well, that, you know, certainly um, makes me happy to hear if you guys are having defensive issues. Yeah. Um, I think that was, you know, our, our last ga- guest that really spotlighted um, some of the issues that Dortmund had in their back line. And, and we obviously saw Lazio's ability to, to further expose that. You know, I, I'm curious, though, uh, Glenn, who are some of the players that Lazio should really be keyed in on um, and, and fans? Who should they be afraid of, you know, when they see that uh, Bruges lineup? I'd say there's about two or three players who who could give uh, Lazio some problems. First, there's Hans van Aken, who is our, our playmaker. If you can keep him out, actually, the Bruges is actually bad without Hans van Aken. Um, so if you can keep him out of the game, it's it's game over, actually. Um, then there's Crepin Diata, who is a Senegalese international. He's... When he's on his game, he's great. When he's not on his game, which is which is an issue, um, he's he's actually one of our worst players. So it's pretty important that he's he's on his game. Uh, same with Tennis, who scored against Real Madrid uh, last year. He's like he's 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 a playful striker. He's he's a striker you want to go to the stadium. Who you want to go to the stadium for? But same problem with the Yata. If he's not in his game, he's, he's actually terrible. So those three players are pretty key players in our team. Sounds very similar to Lazio, by which we have the three, four kind of key players in our starting lineup. And if they're injured or if they're off their game, I was mentioning this the other day, It's it just seems like Lazio is like a totally different team. And that's maybe what happened against, um, like, let's say, the Sampdoria when we lost 3 nothing. If Luis Alberto, Milinkovic, Savic, and Lucas Leiva on the midfield don't play well and we get overturned in that position in the field, 
that looks like they put so much pressure on our defense that we start to concede and look a lot more disorganized than we do. Um, same thing up with the, with the attack, obviously. If Immobile and Correa aren't on form, and if Immobile isn't scoring those goals, then we don't usually win games because he's usually the key playmaker, or not key playmaker, but key goal scorer um, for the club. So um, overall, you've kind of touched upon the group and how Club Bruges and Lazio kind of had the surprise victories off the first, and you said you'd be lucky to finish in the top two positions. So does that kind of make me want to believe that you think the two other teams are going to finish first and second in the group? And if so, who would those two clubs be? Well, obviously, Dortmund and Lazio are the favorites in this group. Um, and I actually thought we were going to be lost without <laughs> without any points, actually. The victory against Zenit surprised well, everyone, actually. So I'm thinking Zenit and us are going to um, have to battle for the, for the third place. Um, and the game against Lazio might be the decider. If we can get a result against Lazio uh, on Wednesday, we might actually end up uh, on the, in, in the third place, but it's going to be difficult. Really difficult. I mean, look, I think it could be certainly a, a, a trap game for Lazio because we are coming off of an extreme high with Dortmund. Um, we took care of business this weekend. Um, and, and so obviously we, we come into this match certainly with some expectations um, that we ride that high, that certainly Lazio showed everybody what they are capable of, you know, in, in that first match. So I think there, there's a, an opportunity for Club Bruges to come in and, and, and trap Lazio in, in the sense. So, you know, I know because and as the high level, you know, are there players that, um, for for you, when you see our lineup, uh, that particularly strike fear in, in you, and, and that you believe that Club Bruges is really going to have to game plan around. Who are those Lazio players for you that that you think that they need to focus on? Well, not surprisingly, um, Immob- Immobile is going to be well. He scores every time, so it's going to be difficult for us to to keep him in check. Um, Luis Alberto as well. He's kind. I mean, I think he's underrated. He's, in my opinion, he's one of the best players at this moment. So he should actually be playing for an even bigger team than Lazio, if that's possible. Um, at the very least, he should be getting call-ups from um, his national. Team. He still um, doesn't get that call-up. Yeah, his, his stats, his his playing, he he's great actually. Uh, and then there's, I'd say Milinkovic Savic as well. I've been a huge fan of him since he was playing at Genk, and he's uh, he's only improved. So if he's fit, if he's on his game, he's he's going to cause us trouble. For sure. Um, and then so we just got a final question for you before we make our match predictions. Um, the lineup for this game, you said it could either be a three-five-two or four-three-three um, formation. Um, if you were to have your desired starting 11, what would that look like? And what do you think the actual starting 11 would look like coming into this match against Lazio? Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be a 3-5-2, and I hope it's going to be a 3-5-2. Um, obviously, Mignolet and Cole, he's if he's capable, because uh, he had COVID last week. But he, he should be fine right now, so I'm hoping he can start. Um, our back three should be Clinton Mata. Brandon Mechler, who kept um, Zubia out of the game against Zenit. When he can play, when he's just a man against man, he's he's one of the best in Europe, in my opinion. He's, he's, he's really great. Uh, and then in the, in the back, the, the third defender in the back is probably going to be Daly, if he's fit, because he's been having uh, some injuries this season. Or Federica. Uh, then on the... On the wings, it's going to be Sobol from the Ukraine national team and Krepa and Diata. Uh, the midfield is going to be Mats Ritz, Hans van Aken and Ruud Vormer. They've been playing for, well, they've been playing for two or three years with each other now, so there's obviously a lot of trust between those three. And the strikers could be 
and it's, it's a toss-up then. It could be Charles de Ketelaar, who has been great against Zenit. could be Noah Lang, our new addition to the team. I'm hoping for uh, de Ketelaar. Dave, a quick question for you. Anybody that you want to see you know, inserted in our starting 11 that wasn't you know, lined up uh, against Dortmund? I think, honestly, if, if we could have our regular 3-5-2 formation, obviously, with um, the same lineup that we usually play, if we're at our best, we are definitely, I believe, one of the best teams in Europe. So I think if we can keep that same core, um, whether it be Immobile and Correa up top, you have, obviously, the left one's kind of a toss-up because last year we were very reliant on Lulic, but Fares has kind of settled in very good. I hope to see he, him on the left wing. On the right wing, hopefully lots of the returns. Um, that would be good to see. Then the same midfield trio, as mentioned before, Lucas Leal, Luis Alberto, Monfrey Savage. Um, the defense is where it kind of gets tricky, but I'm liking what Simone and Zaghi started to do. Um, Wesley Hoa was, played fantastically. I think he was honestly yeah. one of the players, apart from Luis Alberto, obviously, in that match against Bologna on the weekend. So um, it'll be interesting to see if he starts um, or if Luis Felipe gets inserted into the lineup. But I think it's obviously a Cherubi is kind of that cornerstone in the lineup. Patrick's becoming a cornerstone as well on that right center back position. So I think the toss up is either if they insert Wesley Hoett or if they put Luis Felipe in, which is yet to be determined. It kind of just sees, I guess, whatever is fit for Simone and Zaghi coming into this match. And then um, the interesting thing in, right now is um, with regards to the goalkeeper, I think Pepe Arena is actually going to start ahead of Strakosha, which is quite interesting. Um, considering the amount of games that we've been relying on him for the past two, three seasons, we saw Arena start against Bologna. Um, and now it's looking like he wasn't even, uh, Strakosha wasn't even in training um, today as well. So, It'll be interesting to see if they're just giving him a day of rest or if he's actually picked up an injury of some sort where Pepe Reina will um, start in goal. So I think everyone... There's a little bit of nerves just yeah. based on what we saw against Bologna. Obviously, you know, there were some moments that Pepe Reina um, didn't look quite as confident or, or agile as you kind of hope. So you know, hopefully it was kind of first match jitters, but obviously, you know, he's had a long storied career. You know, he's up there in age. So we know what uh, Starkosha's strong suits are. Um, and we know what his weaknesses are, but, you know, we, we hope to see Strakosha when, when we talk about bigger matches. But, you know, I, right, I think um, we do have a little bit of flexibility. You know, I really love what I saw out of Luis Felipe um, in that uh, match against Dortmund. I, I do you know, I mentioned this in, in a tweet of mine, but, you know, I said your, your greatest ability is, is your availability. And Luis Felipe has got all the talent in the world. And I think he can be a, a great center back. Um, unfortunately, you know, he's, he's got a knack for injury. And, and so I hope um, he's back. I'd like to see him in that starting 11 because I, I do believe, you know, he's got that quality. And, and it would be nice for, especially seeing what Wesley Hutt was able to do, for him to maybe see those those Serie A matches and relieve uh, Luis Felipe, you know, and, and give him a little bit more rest for some of these Champions League uh, bouts. So, yeah. yeah. So now, uh, obviously, we, we talk about uh, predictions. So, um, you know, what, what, Glenn, what do you have for this match? Let's hear it on record. What do you, what are you going with? <laughs> um, say Lazio is probably going to win, especially because we don't have any fans in the stadium because of COVID. Um, it's going to be 0 2, I think. Okay. Steven? Interesting. Um, I'm actually going on the more uh, conservative side of things this time. I think that I'm going to go with a draw and I'll be happy with a draw, especially away from home. Um, I think it's definitely going to be something that's different and it's a team that we've never played before. Um, so coming into this match, I definitely think that Inzaghi needs to get his tactics right. I know that we usually say six with a three, five, two formation. Um, it doesn't really change things up in the game, but hopefully that will get to be determined the better. Um, that say that Lazio could come out with a win, which I think they are favored, so it's definitely possible that they do. Um, if they're on their form, if they play the way they did against Borussia Dortmund, I could see them winning 3-1. Um, but obviously, like I said, I'd be happy with the draw, whether it be 0-0, whether it be 1-1. Yeah, so I'd like to... Like, last time, I, I obviously went against Lazio and, and was dead wrong. Um, I almost want to say that again, just um, just to you know keep riding that wave. But um, you know, my, my brain tells me a two-one victory for Lazio. Um, I don't see us coming out of the match without conceding. You know that seems to be our issue. Was really disappointed to see us not keep a clean sheet this weekend in league play. 
um, especially when, you know, at the end of the day, goal differential does matter. So that's where we kind of have to button some things up. But I do see us conceding. I see us scoring, though, a couple goals, uh, continuing to to play off of emotion and obviously being in Champions League. Um, so 2-1 for me. Um, Glenn, any any final words for, you know, Lazio fans on, on you know, just uh, what to expect or, or obviously your thoughts on, on Lazio as an opponent? Um. I'd say, please don't hurt us. <laughs> please keep us safe. No, I mean, you're doing pretty well. I mean, the result against Dortmund was great. I hope you keep doing well because you guys deserve it based on last year in Serie A. Um, and keep winning so we can keep our spots this in, a, in the group. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and let the people know, you know, where can they find your work? Um, or, you know, see your stuff on, on social media or, or any websites you're on? For uh, any Dutch-speaking listeners, uh, on uh, voetbalprimeur.be. That's uh, my website. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, we, we thank you uh, for joining us. We, we certainly hope for an exciting match on Wednesday. Sure. Uh, we are recording this on Monday uh, afternoon, so we appreciate you joining us. Um, Laziali, uh, on behalf of uh, Stephen and I and the Bianco Celesti broadcast, sempre forza Lazio, and let's hope for a big victory, you know, on Wednesday. See you guys.